Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. What would your reaction be if your wife cheated on you while you were in the military? That's exactly what we're going to do today. Enjoy the show. Mandy stared at the well-dressed man standing in front of her, his words echoing in her head. Amanda Black, you have been served, he said with slight sadness. There was dead silence in the office, and for a moment, it seemed to Mandy that time had stopped. In her hand was the death warrant of a five-year marriage with a quiet SOB. She fell into a chair, clutching the papers. Slowly, the office began to come to life. The stares, whispers, and disapproving glances began to increase. Suddenly, Mandy heard her friend's soft voice nearby. Mandy, let go, Kit said softly, taking her friend's hand and pulling her to her feet. Let me take you to the conference room, away from this spotlight. The black-haired 30-year-old woman led her friend away from her colleagues who were staring at her. Those who witnessed the show noted how Mandy went from a loud, flirty, fun blonde to a battered woman in just a few minutes. Some saw irony or humor in this, others saw pity. Most already suspected the reason for the divorce. I don't understand, Mandy stammered. Things just started to change for the better. She wrapped her arms around herself as if the hug gave her more strength. Kit hugged her, trying to calm her friend down. Did Eric say anything? Were there any hints that this would happen? Just the opposite, she said with difficulty, gasping for breath. He was making up for lost time spent abroad. Kit only flinched slightly, but Mandy noticed. Mandy replayed the last four months of her marriage in her head. Since Eric returned home from Afghanistan, their intimate life had been incredible. It was even better than when he returned from Iraq two and a half years ago. He was so passionate and sensual. Oh God, she thought. Most days I can barely walk after this. She smiled sadly, wiping a tear from her eye. It was so exciting. I mean, after I got back from that business trip last week. Mandy's smile warmed a little. Oh my God, Kit, Eric just wore me out. We did this so often that I eventually begged him to stop. Mandy's smile disappeared as she looked at her friend's questioning face. No, nothing happened while I was on that trip. I told you, it's over, she objected. Kit nodded but didn't smile. When was the last time Eric just hugged you or just kissed and touched you, honey? When was the last time he made tender love to you? She sat in a daze, looking questioningly at Kit. With a determined sigh, Kit looked at her friend before continuing. Mandy, she asked directly, did he make love to you or just have a night? Mandy covered her face with her hands and sobbed deeply. But why? Why did he do this, she thought for a moment and then suddenly froze. No, he couldn't know, could he? Slowly raising her head, she was horrified. Oh God, Kit, she whispered, he knows. Oh God, please no, please no. Tears filled Kit's eyes as she hugged her crying friend. She knew Eric quite well, and if he really did, it was terrible. Eric nodded, listening on his cell phone. Thank you, sir, he finally said when he heard that packages containing photographs and legal documents had been delivered to his wife. After hanging up, he turned his attention to his laptop. With a simple click, he set in motion a process that would change the life of his unfaithful wife forever. She will remember for the rest of her life, he thought, picking up the phone and dialing a number. Hello, this is the HR department, said a pleasant young voice. How can I help, Mr. Davis, please? Eric said coldly. This is Eric Black. Oh, Mr. Black, the girl said quickly. Let me transfer you. A few seconds later, Eric was talking to an unsmiling man. The conversation was short, neither of them raised their voices, but the hostility did not go unnoticed. After finishing the conversation, Eric took a deep breath. Looking at the phone, he saw that his wife had already called him five times. Not yet, he thought, trying to calm down. Not yet. There was a sharp knock on the conference room door. When Kit opened it, she immediately recognized the three people standing in front of her. 
The first was a well-dressed older man named Simon Samuels, the vice president and head of their branch. Behind him stood the imposing John Davis, the head of human resources. Kit couldn't help but notice that Mr. Davis's face was bright red, and she could have sworn she saw heat radiating from his face. Standing behind them was Anna Prescott, the office manager and Mandy and Keith's boss. Miss Garnet, we need to talk to Miss Black, Mr. Samuel said grimly. Thank you for your help, but please return to your desk. The three entered the room, and Kit left carefully, closing the door behind her. Miss Black, we have a problem, Samuels began. Mandy quickly walked out into the parking lot, trying not to trip. She held tightly to the manila envelope Mr. Davis had given her. There were photographs inside, terrible photographs of her and Sean Thompson, the business manager on the third floor. Mr. Davis briefly recounted his conversation with Eric. Eric threatened to make public the fact that the company had not complied with the code of conduct. He told Mr. Davis he would discuss the matter with his soon-to-be ex-wife at home before deciding whether to take any legal action. Mr. Davis told her that they would see Sean next, but that she should go home and talk to her husband before this all gets out of hand. He also informed her that they would all sit down with her and discuss her future in the company tomorrow after she met her husband. Mandy had a hard time finding her car because she was still crying a lot. The bright sunlight reflected off the cars, making them a little more difficult to identify. However, her car was not so difficult to find. The big black Hyundai Santa Fe was not so easy to hide. Mandy climbed into it, remembering the arguments that led to Eric finally agreeing to rent the car for her. He relented just before he left for Afghanistan. She wiped her eyes, put on her dark glasses, and went home. A man in an old Chevrolet sedan parked nearby pressed a button on his phone. Thank you, Bob, Eric said calmly. No, no, that's all. Please tell Ron that you guys did a great job and deserve a bonus. Thanks again. Goodbye. Looking at his laptop, Eric sighed again. One more call, he thought, one more, and there will be no turning back. But why would he come back at all? All that's left is the unfaithful wife who tore his heart out and a broken marriage he'll never be able to put back together. Eric shook his head and took out his cell phone. He quickly dialed the number and waited for the call. Second call, third ring, soft click, and then silence. Eric sat emotionless, staring at the video feed on his laptop. Finally, after a few minutes, a tear rolled down his cheek. Mandy pulled the big SUV onto the highway. She hoped that she would be able to avoid rush hour traffic. She slammed her fist on the steering wheel. At that speed, she knew her normal 30-minute trip would take more than an hour. She thought about her marriage, how unlikely it was that she would be able to salvage any of it. Eric found out about her affair before Iraq, he could have forgiven her, but not now. The pictures were taken while he was in Afghanistan. She sobbed, knowing what he must be thinking. Even though the odds were slim, she had to try to save the marriage simply because she loved him. Funny way to show it, right? She reproached herself. She cheated on him more than once, but both times he went abroad to serve his country. She quickly shook her head, as if trying to push away the guilt and shame, but the tears began to flow again. Trust is not something that comes easily to Eric. His childhood was difficult, his father ran away from him and his mother when he was young, and his mother was an alcoholic. In the five years they were married, Mandy saw his mother only twice, once at their wedding and once when their son was born. It took him years to trust Mandy when they met in college. She knew he was a soldier, she thought she accepted it. He had already served for two years and was on his way to graduating with an engineering degree. They dated for a year before Eric proposed to her. She could still hear her father's reaction. No, Mandy, this has nothing to do with Eric, her father said. I think you will be a great husband. It's more about you. I don't think you'll make a good military wife. Don't be mad, but it's damn hard to be a good husband or wife when your spouse is away for a year. Mike LX, Mandy's father, served in the Navy for four years when Mandy was little. She still remembered the fights her parents got into during this time. 
She always knew that he and his mother had a hard time and that he didn't want that for his little girl. You were right, Dad. Mandy snorted and shook her head. You were so right. I made a terrible soldier's wife. They bought a very nice starter home, and Eric got a good engineering position. Life seemed so promising, and then Uncle Sam called. When Eric learned of his appointment, she mercilessly scolded him for abandoning her. To top it all off, when Eric left for Iraq, she was already four months pregnant. Mandy wiped her eyes as she made her way through the traffic. She remembered the loneliness she felt as she continued to live without Eric. Of course, her mom and dad did everything they could to help, but the sleepless nights alone ate her up. She needed Eric to hold her all this time, to hear his voice whispering that everything would be okay. But he wasn't there. She knew she was being selfish, but that didn't make the nights any less cold and lonely. Her mother moved in the last month before the baby was born, and that helped a little. Mandy and her mom, Lisa, had a very close relationship. In most areas, their personalities were so close that it seemed like they were more best friends than mother and daughter, but there were some things her mom just didn't want to talk about. The details of her marriage while her husband was in the Navy was one of them. When Mandy tried to bring the conversation to this topic, her mother always became very upset. Eric returned home the day after Randy was born. For a moment, Mandy felt like they were a real family, but that didn't last long. He left after just 10 days, and she was left alone again. Her mother saw some of the signs and begged her not to give in to them. She constantly harped on the damage that one mistake can do to the lives of so many people. Of course, she wouldn't go into detail, but Mandy suspected that her father might be having an affair. They were always pleasant and polite to each other, even friendly but they were never passionate. It was more like they were friends living in the same house. Mandy recalled how she struggled with depression and loneliness in the months after giving birth. Returning to work helped at first. Then she was assigned to a project with Sean Thompson. Where Eric had the rugged, boy-next-door good looks, Sean could have been a male model. His soft baritone voice and beautiful smile made Mandy's heart skip a beat every time he walked into the room. He carried himself with confidence and made an impression. She knew that he was married to an attractive, rich socialite from New York. She and her children moved to the area just a couple of years ago. One day, she even met his wife at a party. She was beautiful in a cosmetic sense, and her personality was perfect for one of those housewife reality shows. But this only made Sean even more tempting. Just a month after they started working together, she gave in. Temptation, give up, she winced. I was the one actions with him. A short two-day business trip with the project team made it possible to turn this action into a full-fledged romance. They met a few more times, but she broke them off shortly before Eric returned home. Upon his return, Eric changed. The carefree country part of him seemed to have died. She knew that his trip had been difficult and that he had lost several close friends while he was there. For the first few months after his return, she simply held Eric in her arms, trying to return him to his previous state. She had no doubt that she loved him and her affair with Sean was just a season of weakness. Then, just when everything seemed to be going so well again, the order came for him to deploy to Afghanistan. She was crushed. It was no surprise that two months after he left, she found herself back in Sean's arms. She knew there was no excuse for this but in the end, the loneliness and fear overcame the guilt. She was stalking Sean again, and it took all of her charms to lure him away from the succubus from the marketing department, whom he began communicating with after their affair ended. She felt her face flush with shame at what she had done. Of course, you're ashamed, but that didn't stop you, did it? Mandy cursed herself. She tried to hold back her tears, but couldn't. Feeling self-loathing pour out with each new tear, Sean spent several weekends at her house. He even managed to persuade her to take part in another project. For a moment, Mandy even thought about leaving Eric, then reality set in. She, Randy, and her parents traveled to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to meet Eric when he returned for r, &R. The trip there was stressful, to say the least. 
Mandy was sure that her parents suspected her, but they had not yet told her about it. Then she saw Eric, and all her worries disappeared. When he hugged her and kissed her, she remembered why she married him in the first place. They spent every hour reviving their marriage and strengthening their family. Mandy smiled faintly as she remembered that time. Eric was so passionate, so tender, so incredibly loving that she swore to herself in that moment that she would remain faithful to him for the rest of her life. Then Eric told her that he was not going to return to the army, that four months after returning from Afghanistan, he would become a civilian. She cried openly, knowing that soon they would become a real family again. After returning from Fort Bragg, she broke off all ties with Sean. To disappointment and anger, she poured everything she had into preparing for Eric's return. Mandy even started seeing a doctor about her fears and loneliness. She was diagnosed with clinical depression and began receiving counseling and medication. As the months passed, she felt herself becoming stronger, both mentally and emotionally, every day. She swore that she would make up for it all by being the best wife Eric could ever hope to be. Finally, when he returned several months later, she fulfilled her vows. She did not deny him anything, not her body, not her attention, not any part of her love. Although Kit was right, things were different when Eric came home this time. He was more careful and didn't share his heart as freely. She just thought it was because of what happened when he was abroad. Now she began to realize that he already knew about. Eric started gloomily out the window, watching the light rain fall on those unlucky enough to get caught. He could tell the small flare wouldn't last long, soon, the sun would shine again. Not soon enough, Eric thought. He looked at the small dot on the laptop screen, she had been motionless for a while, but now she was finally moving. His wife's SUV was stuck in traffic but was now moving forward. Taking a deep breath, he looked at his watch. It's time to make the call. Depending on what was said, this could be the last time he spoke to the woman he had deeply loved for the last six years of his life. Mandy nearly turned the steering wheel when her cell phone rang. A quick glance told her it was him. She said a short prayer, took a deep breath, and answered, Eric, yes, it's me. Baby, please, she said, trying to suppress her sobs. Please let me try to explain, to tell you how sorry I am. Cute, Eric, there was only silence. Darling, she said, are you still here? Yes, for now, he answered briefly. Honey, where are you? Are you home with Randy? I don't have a home, Mandy, he said, and his voice only betrayed the pain for a second. You took care of it. Where are you? It doesn't matter. I'm just waiting, there was hope in her voice, so, how are you? Waiting for me, honey? Mandy couldn't help the sobs that caught in her throat. She had never heard so much pain and anger in his voice before, and certainly not at her. Eric, please, I have so much to say. I screwed up so bad. I know I screwed up, but I need to talk to you. I have so much to tell you. I love you, baby, only you. There was silence on the other end of the line. Okay, Mandy, say what you need, but I doubt it will change anything. You slept with some other guy while I was away, not just once, but many times. So what the hell do you think you can say will make any difference? Please, Eric, please, for us, she begged through tears, don't leave us. Until I see you, please, baby, do not go. Throw, he hissed. What did you do to us? No, she screamed into the phone. I know what I did, but I never gave up on us. I was alone and scared. I know that's not an excuse, but that's how it happened. But I love you, and I believe in us, honey. I really want to restore everything. Are you serious? He asked in surprise. Eric paused, wondering if she really believed what she was saying. You mean you didn't abandon us when you were on your knees in front of him? What about the way you screamed his name over and over again? Tell me, how the hell could you even think that this doesn't mean abandoning us? All she could do was cry as she weaved through the traffic, trying to get to him as quickly as possible. If only she could meet him face to face, then he would see the remorse she felt, and then perhaps there would be some hope, he continued bitterly. 
I finally got proof that my wife cheated on me while I was in Afghanistan. I think we're both lucky. I think I might have killed you and that man if I had found out about this while I was in the States. After a few seconds, he sighed, Amanda, this will be our last conversation. If we are disconnected or one of us is put on standby, then there will be no other conversation. Eric, please, she begged, we can go to a psychologist, we can handle this, baby, we really can, listen. There are a few things you need to know before you get home. First, I cleaned out all of our accounts and transferred all of our credit cards. I think you've been deceiving me for the last three years, so I'm returning the favor, he ignored her sigh. You can keep the house because I'm sure I can still smell someone else's smell in our bed. I collected everything I wanted. In the end, everything fit into only one suitcase, so the rest is yours. You can keep your SUV, although I don't know how you'll pay for it because I suspect you'll be fired tomorrow. I sent these photos to all your colleagues, family, all our friends, and even our church. I have also submitted them and a bunch of videos to several sites along with all your information. I suspect that you will soon become very popular. Oh, Eric, no, Mandy sobbed. Why, why don't you wait while we talk? I waited, Mandy, he said calmly. I waited four months after I returned, but you didn't say anything, and you wouldn't say anything if you didn't get caught, right, baby? What could she say? He was right. As for your little toy boy, Eric grinned, I almost paid him a little visit, but after several meetings with his wife, I don't think this will be necessary. Oops, so vindictive. You might want to give Sean a little warning, he better run. It seems his wife's family has interesting connections with some very dubious people. I'll be surprised if little Sean makes it through a year without an accident. She will probably come for his partners too. Oh, wait, this applies to you too, doesn't it? Eric, please, give me a chance to make amends. Mandy's cell phone beeped. Looking at it, she recognized the number. Eric, it's Mrs. Johnson calling from next door. His tone was threatening. Startled Mandy answered softly. Okay, okay, baby, I was just worried that something had happened to Randy. Randy's okay, Eric's voice softened. He is with me now and fast asleep. She breathed a sigh of relief. Speaking of Sean's wife, Victoria, he said calmly, when you two went on your little business trip last week, he was interrupted by Mandy's cell phone ringing. It was another neighbor calling. Honey, this is Mrs. Watson. Are you sure Randy is okay? Yeah, Randy and I are fine, Eric said in such a creepy tone that Mandy began to panic. He grinned. Now, about Victoria Thompson. She's just something. While you and that man were acting like you should have been for the last three years, I spent two days getting to know his wife better. Mandy choked with anger and pain caused by her husband's betrayal. Her tears started flowing again. I wish I could tell you that she's a hell of a lot better in bed than you are, but the truth is, she's not, he said between her whining about everything she wants and where, how, and when to do it. There is no damn time for pleasure. I'm sure Sean will agree. So, congratulations, Mandy, you've won the best of the worst award. Eric, stop it, please. Mandy begged. Please, just stop. She started sobbing again, pounding her small fists on the steering wheel, shouting obscenities at the surrounding cars as they crawled forward. She slowly regained her composure and wiped away tears of frustration. Okay, Eric, she sniffled, you win. You took revenge, you broke me. She fell silent, waiting for his answer, but heard only silence. But I still love you, Eric, she said quietly. There is no excuse for what I did. I know that, but all I ask is a chance to make it up to you. I'm begging you, please, let me explain. There are some medical problems you should be aware of. If you ever love me, please, meet me. Please, baby. Medical reasons, he snorted. Postpartum depression, clinical depression, bipolarism. Heck, try PTSD. In the end, it doesn't matter, does it, Mandy? You still went and had intimate with some other guy. How did I know? It really doesn't matter. Once I did that, 
I hired several people to keep an eye on you. They did a hell of a job, too, tapping phones and installing cameras all over our house, even putting one in our bedroom. Oh, Eric, she exclaimed, do you really hate me so much that you are capable of all this? Is there really not a drop of love left? Well, it was, he answered quietly, before I watched the video of you and him in our bed. Do you remember that time, Mandy, when Randy walked in on you? Mandy gasped. Oh God, no, please, not this. Eric's voice was tense as he tried to control his emotions. Imagine how I felt as I sat there and watched my two-year-old son call another man daddy. Everything I felt for you died right as I watched you tuck our son into bed with both of you. Damn you, Eric's voice trembled. I think I was lucky that I didn't know this until we went to Fort Bragg. When I saw this, I was shocked. I almost got lost there, and I was in a place where you can't afford to get lost. Eric looked at his laptop and saw that Mandy was almost home. A cruel smile crossed his handsome face as he continued in a cold tone, What about hurting you, Amanda? I haven't even started yet. I still have a few, he heard Mandy gasp. Oh my god, she whispered. Surprises, he finished. Mandy pulled her SUV to the side of the road and watched in horror as flames engulfed what had once been their home. Like I said, Amanda, the house and everything left in it belonged to you. Mandy shook, still not believing her eyes. Damn it, Eric, what did you do? This is a rhetorical question, isn't it? Eric said with a grin. I was taught to build in combat conditions, Mandy. Doesn't it make sense I might know a thing or two about destruction too? Where's Randy? She shouted. Damn it, Eric, where the hell is my son? Our son is sitting three feet away from me and sleeping in his car seat, he said mockingly. So tell me, he continued, can you read the message I left in our front yard? What message? She muttered. Oh my god. Eric chuckled. I wasn't sure people would be able to read it from the ground, but the news helicopters, they should enjoy the words cheater burned into the front lawn. I wouldn't count on the sympathy of the neighbors, he continued. I posted these photographs throughout the neighborhood and paid several teenagers to hand out additional copies throughout the block. He stopped for a few seconds and listened to his wife's sobs. Mandy, perhaps you should think about, Eric said bitterly, where you will sleep today and in the near future. I think you could sleep in your SUV until they come and pick it up. Or maybe not. I doubt Sean will be able to help, I'm sure Victoria is already flaying him alive. I think only your parents remain. I wonder how your father will react to the fact that two cheaters live under his roof. What? Mandy sobbed through her sobs. Damn it, Mandy, are you really that stupid? You always told me that your father cheated on your mother while he was in the Navy. Damn it, he laughed cruelly. Oh hell yes, your father told me a little about this after I returned from Iraq. Why do you think he did this, Mandy? Do you think he suspected that his little girl was cheating on her husband just like her mom? But unlike your father, Eric continued, I cannot live with a cheating wife for the rest of my life. Maybe he stayed for you, or maybe he still loved her. I don't know. That's his decision. Mine is to start over and hopefully find a woman to spend the rest of my life with. I am confident that I will find someone who can love me, be faithful, and be a good mother to Randy. Please, Eric, Mandy sobbed, I can be that kind of wife. Just give me one more chance to show you. And I'm already a good mother to Randy. I'm the only mother he needs. I suppose that's something the court has to decide, isn't it, he said calmly. Of course, the fact that I burned down our house and basically bankrupted us probably won't do me any good. Eric saw a young man in a t-shirt and baseball cap get out of a taxi and stop on the side of the road, looking in his direction. Eric flashed his headlights twice, and the guy walked towards him. Okay, Mandy, Eric said calmly, looking at his watch. There are a few things you still need to know, and there's not much time left, so listen very carefully. First of all, so that your bosses don't get too worried about my threats, however, Victoria is filing a similar lawsuit and is likely to win. I think the court will really like her and all the evidence I gave her. As for me, 
Eric cleared his throat. Well, I don't like my chances in court, so I agreed to work abroad. I think Randy and I will really like it. No, Mandy, she shouted into the phone. You can't take my child. Actually, he is my son, and I can, Eric replied calmly. In a few years, he won't even remember you. But don't worry, I'll send you pictures of him for Christmas, and we'll even call on Mother's Day and his birthday. Since we won't know where you will be, we'll just call your parents. Mandy cried bitterly, realizing the hopelessness of her situation. Eric sat for a while, worried and somewhat alarmed by his own actions. He knew he wasn't going to send her pictures or call her. The thought that she would desperately wait for calls that would never come and relive this revenge for years to come was more cruel than he had previously thought. Goodbye, he said coldly. I hope you rot in hell. He wiped a tear from his cheek, listening to her hysterical cries begging for her son, and hung up the phone. Captain Black, asked the guy in a t-shirt standing in front of him. Not anymore, Eric smiled weakly. I'm just Eric Black. Well, at least for a while longer. The young man grinned and handed him an envelope with the numbers and passwords to the offshore bank accounts into which his funds had been transferred, minus, of course, some fees. Here are the passports, photo IDs, and plane tickets for Marcus Gray and his son, Michael Gray, the teenager said, smiling. Eric smiled even wider and began putting his old IDs and two SIM cards from his cell phones into a small metal bucket. Grinning, he took the lighter and melted them into a small puddle of black and plastic. Then he took a small hammer, smashed both phones, and threw the remains into a bucket. Satisfied with his work, he threw the bucket into the trash can. It was better than I could have imagined, Eric chuckled. He quickly took out the car keys and handed them to the boy. Tell Bob and Ron thanks for the rent, he said quietly. To whom, asked the young man with a wide smile on his face. I'm sorry, Eric grinned. I must have been mistaken. A few minutes later, Eric was checking his luggage at the airport. He couldn't help but smile as he thought about what awaited him and his son in the next few weeks. His contract didn't start until next month, so they were going to spend a couple of weeks on a secluded beach with a pretty lieutenant he'd met in Afghanistan. They were only friends back then, but now that he had proof of his wife's infidelity, Eric couldn't wait to find out if there was more to it. Mr. Gray, the man at the check-in politely said, have a wonderful flight for you and your son, Marcus Gray and his son. Marcus Gray and his son walked through the lobby and began their new life. What would you do if you were the main character? What action would you take? See you in the next video.